NASA's Artemis program is making strides in its plans to send humans back to the moon, and the Artemis II mission is an important step in that journey. Scheduled for launch in May of 2024, this mission will be the first crewed mission of NASA's Orion spacecraft, which is set to take off on a lunar flyby test and return to Earth. This is the first time that people will be leaving low Earth orbit since the Apollo missions. They're going to be going around the moon and coming back similar to the Artemis I mission and splashing down off the coast of San Diego. During the first part of the mission, the Orion spacecraft will be in a high Earth orbit for about 42 hours. And during this high Earth orbit, the Orion spacecraft will be going through numerous checkups from the astronauts inside and the crew down here on Earth. They're going to be checking on the life support systems, everything that they need to do in order to get to the moon and back. When the, everything checks out, the Orion capsule will fire its main engine and go to a TLI maneuver, which will send it into a lunar free return trajectory. Could be going about 25,000 miles an hour while it's in space between the moon and the Earth. And by the time it splashes down in the coast of San Diego, it'll be going about 15 miles an hour. People aren't the only thing that will be going into space on this mission. There's the NASA CubeSat Launch Initiative, the CSLI, and they've sought proposals in 2019. And these CubeSats will be secondary payloads on the Artemis II mission. We're not sure exactly what these payloads are going to be at this time, but they will be launching these payload CubeSats out of the stage adapter with spring-loaded dispensers after the Artemis mission launches and the SLS rocket separates from the Orion capsule. And according to NASA, the Artemis I Orion spacecraft has returned to Kennedy Space Center. On its way to Kennedy Space Center, the Orion space capsule was transported by tractor trailer. It is transported in a very durable, protective case for the whole ride to Kennedy Space Center. And there's a reason for this. It protects the payload inside the capsule. The capsule itself, because this thing is basically full of science and full of engineering that they don't want to get damaged because they're going to have to take it apart and use the information that they give from this to build a better Orion capsule in the future. I did a little digging to try to figure out what this case is and the Reddit user UtheoTube2 three days ago had some information about this. The label on the side of the capsule, DOTSP-15999 is a special permit issued to NASA for the transportation of the Orion capsule. It sounds like the assembled Orion capsule is full of various hazardous substances, most notably hydrazine and various explosives that usually require special packaging for transportation. Permit allows NASA to leave all these substances inside the Orion capsule during transportation instead of having to disassemble the capsule and remove it all. Obviously, NASA would prefer to do that in a controlled environment of KSC, rather than just wherever the Navy drops off the capsule on the Pacific coast. Makes sense. So not only does this outside protection protect the inside of the Orion space capsule, but this outside protection protects us from what is inside of the Orion space capsule. If you could take a second and like this video and subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. It's going to help me out a little bit, but it's going to help you out even more because YouTube's algorithm will pick that up and start showing you more NASA and space flight content in the future. Not just from me, but from other creators as well. So if you could take a second, that'd be great to like and subscribe. Now let's get back to the Artemis 2 mission. So is this it for the Orion capsule from the Artemis 1 mission? Not quite yet. So they're going to be removing the heat shield. They're going to be doing extensive analysis on it. They're also going to be removing payloads from inside of the capsule, and they'll be removing the mannequins from inside of the Orion capsule, the dummies that were taking readings through the whole Orion and Artemis 1 mission. And this is the dummy, Munich and Campos, that they'll be removing from the Orion capsule. It took readings about vibrations and also it had accelerometers. There's two sensors behind the head of Munich and Campos. There's some in the headrest, in the chair, and vibrations were taken. And also there's radiation meters throughout the Orion capsule. Lockheed Martin has designed and built the Orion spacecraft for the Artemis 1 mission and also has numerous Artemis missions in the future 
that they'll be building the Orion spacecraft for. Now, for the Orion 1 Artemis 1 mission, they're going to be using the same avionics from 1 for the Artemis 2 mission. So they're going to have to rip out the avionics, parts of the avionics from Orion 1. They'll be using that in the Artemis 2 mission. So this will postpone the Artemis 2 mission a little bit of time, not a lot of time, and they will have to go through extensive testing to get them ready for the Artemis 2 mission. And NASA and Lockheed Martin have been working diligently for the last few years to get the Orion 2 spacecraft into production and get it to a place where it will be ready to launch in time for the Artemis 2 mission. Now, replacing these avionics from the Artemis 1 mission into the Artemis 2 mission is going to take a little while. And the head of NASA isn't happy about it, but it's just something that needed to be done because replicating the same exact avionics for the Artemis 1 mission and the Artemis 2 mission would have cost NASA a lot of money. So in order to cut costs, in order to save some time, they went with the same avionics from Artemis 1 into the Artemis 2 and Orion 2 missions. Now that we are in 2023, there's going to be a lot of Artemis 2 action happening. So please stay tuned for that. I want to say on a little side note here, thank you very much for all of your support throughout the time that I've been doing this. It's almost four years now on February 14th of 2023. It'll be about four years. So thank you so much for becoming part of the flight crew for hitting the like button with maximum dynamic pressure and also subscribing to the show. You are amazing and I could not have done this without you. I'm going to continue bringing you Artemis mission updates and also Starship updates, NASA updates, and spaceflight updates in the future. So thank you again. I appreciate every single one of you and I love you all. Take care of yourselves and each other and I'll see you in the next one. So, uh, hey, yeah, you're still here. That's pretty cool. I'm super excited about 2023. I got some links over there. And if you want to click them, that would be great. There's Artemis updates from last year, from 2022. And this is the first like full video I did of 2023. So I hope you're excited about it. I hope you're excited about 2023 because there's going to be some really cool stuff. And like I said before, super happy that I'm here to continue doing this because I love space flight and I love doing this. So uh, yeah, if you want to click those links, that'd be cool. Watch another video. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I think that's it. That's it for today. That's it. I think I'm going to hit this button over here. This is the stop recording button. It actually says stop recording on the thing. So I'm going to hit it. That's a that's the face I make when I hit the stop recording like this. Because I'm sad. I'm sad that I have to stop recording. Okay. I'm not sad.